to make a point. That's not a problem for me. Good. Okay, sorry, I actually started it without telling anyone. Uh, <laughs> we're in. Happy, hey. happy, happy New Year. Happy, happy New Year, everyone. 2022, or 2021, the hangover of 2020. Yeah, it's it's already going. Uh, it's already going really much better than 2020. I see. Yeah, it be... <laughs> it's not quite the like year long conga line that we were hoping for. It's not did it to be, but yeah, yeah. And one of the worst things, of course, still continues, which is that um, Artie, you're you're still not uh, you're not on Twitter. Yeah, you've been yeah. locked locked out of the internet. Why why has that happened? It is so frustrating because if you get banned from Twitter or suspended, at least they tell you why or you have some inkling why. But I haven't. I haven't violated any rules. I haven't done anything that isn't, um, you know, up and up on the up and up according to Twitter's preposterous rules, even as they are. Mm. But there's some technical glitch in which, as we all know, every so often, every time anybody whines about you or files a complaint, you have to refresh your phone number and send a little uh, verification code. Well, this right. little text message coming to my phone, it's not coming through. You know what I mean? So they're telling right. me they're not going to let me touch my Twitter account uh, until I receive this text message on my phone and enter the little code. But the text message is just, I've tried and tried and tried. It hasn't come through. And because of the holiday season, nobody's getting back to me anywhere. Um, mm. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt and assuming this is just some kind of technical glitch, either on the part of Twitter or on the part of my mobile phone company, which for some reason is screwing up these messages. I sometimes don't get messages from from when people who have sent me who said they've sent them to me. That sometimes happens to me. But it's it, obviously if it was like say the ambulance service, I'd be <laughs> I'd be more worried about it than than if it was uh, you know. I would imagine imagine that it is a technical glitch because if Twitter wanted to, to ban you, like they're pretending that you know they they have ten, well, yeah, but happy the, to you ban know, you for, for for very smallest um, infractions. So I can't even imagine that they feel the need to do this. You're glitching yeah. a little bit. You're you're glitching, point. Helen. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe uh, internet needs a reboot or something. Don't worry, we can hold our attention. Yeah. We can we can do without the we can do without the eye candy for a few for a few seconds. <laughs> oh, um, I'm not the eye candy anymore. Well, hell, <laughs> no, I'm really eye candy no, now. No, you know, yeah. I meant you'd, <laughs> you'd take that on your shoulders, Artie. Um, but I will give them. I mean, there's there's a little bit of grounds to suspect that it's possible that it's not a glitch, although it likely is, because it has happened to other people too, and it seems to have happened a lot lately. I've I've, I've heard a few well, other cases. I've been googling, yes. and people are like, I'm having the same problem. And my uh, myself, my mobile phone company is this, you know, as hard as it is to get through to a human being in a giant mm. telephone, telecom company, they don't seem to see that there's any problem. So I'm kind of stuck in limbo right now. It's very frustrating because there's very little I could do until we sort of get past the holiday season and let everybody get through their backlog of whatever, you know, give it a few more days. And then mm -hmm. I'll just start pushing again and escalating. How did you meantime, how I'm did happy. you enjoy Christmas without uh without uh, uh feeding yourself a constant unending stream of horrible news stories? Oh, isn't it funny? In some ways it feels so nice to be able to get back in touch with my full human body and not be wired up to the matrix of the Twitter sludge all day long, but yeah. it's also withdrawal and sadness at the same time. So it's been really <laughs> I'm, I mean, I don't want to sound like the, the most precious little fluff ball in the world, but it has been kind of hard, you know? I really yeah. miss it, especially yeah. in lockdown. I really want to communicate with people through Twitter. So I've been a little bit, yeah, it's been a little... Hmm. I wonder, I wonder, you know, there's an interesting thing. <clears throat> I used to get criticized for calling um, uh, my, my pieces about women who've been thrown off Twitter for ridiculous reasons that disappeared. Because, uh, um, you know, the disappeared brings up memories, obviously, of the, uh, the disappeared with the IRA and the disappeared in Niger Argentina. But um, I, I think it was in uh, Klein's book, uh, she she told in Shock, uh, shock, ta shock Tactic, or what's it called? Uh, you know, oh, the Shock Doctrine, yeah. The Shock Doctrine. Um, she pointed out that, that disappearances could be simply uh, the junta or whoever wanted to disappear you would just drive up to you on the street, um, put you in a car, and just drive you into the countryside um, during, uh, the, you know, around the time of an important vote, uh, so, something like that. And I wonder whether Twitter is using this as a kind of a soft block to try and... Uh, let me ask you a question. Actually, this will immediately dispel my paranoia. When you Googled it, Artie, were uh -huh. the people who were complaining, you know, 
political in any way? Were they activists? Mm, it's hard to say, but I'll tell you this. It happened at exactly the stroke of midnight. I tweeted at 11.59 and at 12.00 a.m. is when it happened. Wow. So, That's really interesting. Year zero. <laughs> Christmas Day. It was like Santa. Literally, it's midnight oh, Christmas Day. Oh, like yeah. the anti-Santa. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. Santa. <laughs> Sorry, that's a that's a that's a t that's a Ted line. I just realized. Excuse me for quoting my own show. Um, uh, <laughs> Self plagiarism. People get fired for that these days. <laughs> just I don't wa I don't watch it, and I forget I've, ri I've written the jokes. Um, uh, oh, no, but that's quite nice. Laugh all, all over again. Yeah, like, 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 I always thought if I get Alzheimer's, then I'll be able to enjoy my shows again. <laughs> I'll be like, that's a clever idea. <laughs> and not, and not, uh, oh, that didn't really work. But anyway, um, so, so, yes. Uh, uh, just, how was you guys' holiday? Am I back now? Am I back? Yeah, you're oh, yeah, you sound great now, uh, yeah. Alan. How are yours is his holiday? I always want to, I always want to remove her from the thing when, <laughs> when <I> was... <laughs> um, you're just bitter that she's on top. Mine was great because <laughs> mine was great uh because I uh uh, uh I watched uh you know I have to say every time I watch it and I I know you guys go quiet when I talk about stuff that's not gender critical feminism but every time I watch it I'm just reminded that it is possibly one of the greatest films of all time. Certainly one of the greatest scripts. And uh, we watch it every year, and it's School of Rock. I've still never seen it. It's oh. great. It's great. I love it. I love School it. of Rock is perfect. It's oh, a perfect, know. perfect film. It's a perfect script. It's certainly a perfect script. And I do think it's possibly uh, Linklater's best film. I sometimes find them a bit insufferable. Uh, but, but, but School of Rock is made with an audience of in mind. And it's it works for both kids and for adults. And there's an incredibly adult joke near the end where Jack Black says, at the worst moment he could say it, he says, I've been touched by your children, and I'm sure that I've touched them too. <laughs> <laughs> to have that in a children's movie, it's so daring. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's great. And he, Jack Black, you know, he can rest easy because that, that performance and... His whole attitude and his whole <sighs> everything about him, I just think that will go down in the ages. You know, it'll live forever. That film. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to to, to derail. Okay. How's your How's yours, I Helen? I, I did some I did some something uh, with uh, a, a chap and a mutual friend. On. No, it's doing it again. Yeah. You're glitching. You're glitching. Oh, am I? Oh, yeah. No. Maybe you need to. On. Okay. No, no. So um, I did a bit a bit of singing. We recorded a song. Um, unfortunately, it's been it's cold outside, outside so if you ever um, play it to anyone, that's... people would be like, oh my God, no, look, look, she didn't care about women, women and girls. Yeah, that's cancelled. You can't sing that. That's cancelled. Um, yeah, no, it's going, it's going, it's like. Okay, uh, let me, uh, let me out and come back in. I'll let uh, uh, and reset your router. Try that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I've done that. I did it earlier. Let me, do, let me do. Let me do. I'll tell you what. Let me do more. But I'll. Uh, no, I won't do that. Do that. Carry on. I'll. I'll fiddle. Okay. See you in a sec. Um, uh, kind of a neat effect, though. Save that for your next song. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's, well, we can't. We can't exclude Helen from some of the most interesting uh, stuff. So. Okay. Um, Am I might back. I've switched from, from Ethernet. Ethernet to Wi-Fi. No. Okay, well, I'm going to back to Ethan. I think you have to turn off the whole computer and turn it back on. Oops, okay. I said it. I said my catchphrase. I said it wrong, though, which is good. Um, yeah, no, you should definitely watch out School of Rock again. It is um, the most charming thing. That's uh, that's. Uh, it's just, I, I, and it's one of those that just never gets old. Uh, I, I always think the the definition of a classic film is a film where every single scene you think this is, I love this scene. <laughs> Every single one, you just think that, I love this scene. And that's what I, all I, Yeah, about. I have some movies like that where I could recite every single line for sure. Really? Which, which ones? Don't well, tell me, is it of Oz? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Judy, it's always Judy. <laughs> no, but in West Side Story is one of them. Star is born, West Side Story. <laughs> I love West Side Story. Really? You don't that like West Side Story? I find it a bit like a big three, four course meal and it's all potatoes and, 
nourishing and what do you mean it's like cute boys uh, they're like <laughs> tap tap fighting they dance oh, I, fight i forgot about that and i do like the america song uh, <laughs> oh america. i love that song yeah. it's so good right, Gigi, sorry to interrupt i've gone from wi-fi back to ethernet and my back no. Okay, I'm gonna go. I go out. <laughs> I'll be back. I'll be. I'll be back in. I start. Then. Then I'll come back. But you carry on. Go on. I'll just. Do. This is a good way of asking the Stanland question a record number of times. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell uh, you another movie I'm weirdly obsessed with, and I don't know yeah. why. It's uh The Hunt for Red October. Really? That I know. Is it's out of character. Isn't that the one that? Oh no! I, there was another one that Tarantino did some rewriting on. Oh, no, not that one. The Humphrey October is like a Tom Clancy novel, which sounds weird, but it's just like this brilliant, the dialogue and the screenplay is brilliant. And it's just like this amazing, really? it's just like a taut, taut screenplay where like every single, there's this thing going on where every everybody doesn't know what everybody else is thinking and everybody's trying to figure out what everybody's thinking. Right. And so there's this amazing, it's like a big chessboard under the sea. And I love submarine movies. So. Yes, yes. <laughs> And I've been I've been trying to learn chess, and I oh. cannot I cannot do it. I cannot do it. It's like you know the way chess masters can think ten moves ahead. I can I can't think of the move I'm making. I the move I'm currently making. I can't <laughs> think ahead for that one. <laughs> it's oh just, my god, so hard. So hard. It's really, I like really like hard. really brainy, you know, like crossword puzzles and things. So I tried to get into chess. It seemed like it would appeal to my sort of that kind of part of me that likes challenges i was like no way it's just no. like a headache just trying to it, think it, everything it, through it, it is it is quite it is quite taxing by the way i apologize to all the gender critical people who tuned in for a gc <laughs> chat and now we're on to this i'm actually gonna i'm gonna make it even more boring now and i'm gonna ask Artie, do you ever do uh cryptic the kind of cryptic crosswords that are popular in the uk <sighs> No, I hate them. I've done one or two of them. And somebody showed me the rules and you have to figure out these rules in order because I mean if you look at one of them without even knowing the rules, you're like forget oh, it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But oh, I, I, I swear to God, once you once you absorb a few of those rules and you get one that's not too hard, they can be really fun. They I, can yeah. be oh, yeah. they, they just Drive me crazy. They drive me crazy. I just like straightforward New York Times crossword. That's yeah, I love the American ones are basically uh, you know. Uh, largest uh, largest building in New York, <laughs> and then the answer is Empire State Building or something. It's like, well, you know, yeah, that's all you have to do is Google it. Um, <laughs> hey, Helen, go on, give us count to ten. Let's see if we hear twenty. One, two, three, twenty. Yay! No, I think that oh. might be okay. I think that might be. I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see. Hold on a sec. I don't ever like to be uh, okay. Um, uh, Helen, how was your Christmas? Um, um, yeah, it was. It was quite nice. Oh no, no, Jay, what's going no. on? And I, I feel okay, like we okay. can't do I, it. I'm really sorry. Um, I, I, I what I'm going to do then is I'm going to completely log, log out, and I'm going to go and re reboot the network. But it's going to take take ten minutes. But please continue without me, and, and I'll rejoin at about half a four. Okay. Okay. And maybe change your microphone. Try that first. Maybe it's a mic thing. Yeah, well, actually, I, don't you see that there's also a, an image uh, kind of delay? Oh, yeah, that's true. That is true. Let's not reboot anymore. I'll go and reboot everything. Ten minutes, I'll be back. Okay. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Um, well, I picked a shitty week to not be on Twitter because I have no idea what's going on in the GC trenches this week. Oh, uh, well, we can't start talking about it because Helen will want to get in on it. It's all, uh, it's all, um, it's all, I mean, there's some fantastic things happening. The funniest thing is the caffeine stock reaction. And we should really wait for, for for Helen for that, but it's so brilliant. And someone pointed, I'm just writing a post about it, but someone pointed out that, you know, it, it like they they did a brilliant thing. This guy, this uh, philosopher, Jonathan Ichikawa, I think his name is, he, um, he wrote this open letter. Uh, and it's the usual kind of open letter that pops up whenever um, a feminist says something. Um, it's all, you know, she's causing harm, she's doing this, you know, and, and hundreds of people signed it as usual or, third, you know, or a huge amount of philosophers or something like this. And they had to publish an errata. They had to publish an update because they got something wrong. And they, apo they apologized for it. So you got an open letter, right, that has a, a thing at the end saying, 
when we when we wrote this, we didn't realize that blah 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 blah. It's already got hundreds of signatures or however many signatures it has. Of course, Check. no one's reading it. Of course, no one's reading yeah. it. They're just yeah. they're just virtue signaling, and and they've had to. I don't think I've ever seen an apology in an open letter before. <laughs> Yeah, that's so weird. But I mean, that does touch on, I mean, this is slightly vamping and filling space while we're waiting for Helen to come back. But uh, it's this this sort of uh, forced vacation from Twitter and from gender critical discussion has made me sort of step back a bit. And, what you know, I've been reading some headlines and things like that, so I haven't been completely absent from it. But without going on Twitter every day, I'm really far removed from yeah. what's on a day day. And it gave me this overwhelming sense of sort of despondency about how the sides are just, that just feels like in some ways we're making so much progress, but the people who are like signing those letters, <clears throat> they just, they're not even close to getting it yet. It seems they're so far removed, you know? And I guess I, another thing is I've been really looking on the dating apps lately and just scrolling through all these profiles of guys. And there's just so many of them are just saying the same stupid things, you know, like, yeah. You know, I'll look at their Instagram feed and they seem nice. And I'm like, oh, I might want to go on a date with that person. And then, you know, they'll have some giant paragraph. that's just like, you know, all about the horrible suffering that trans people are going through. And it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's incredible. Yeah. And you can and and no amount of evidence will ever will ever convince them that the suicide statistics have been debunked. The, the Well, you know, you know, on that, I do think that mental health problems within the trans community are high. And yeah, oh, that, I'm sure. I think self-harm is very high. I think it's just, and there are, there are soft, like, you know, I know a lot of trans people do lose family members when they come out as trans. They don't get murdered um, yeah. the way well, women well, do. Already, but they do have their own problems, for but sure. But as Tina Traster pointed out, a lot of the time, that's the kids rejecting the parents. You know, that's well, cool. among the kids, yeah, but I think because, in the older generations, it's harder. It's it's much easier now, but you know, mm. there are problems in the trans community for sure. Um, sure. It's just murder isn't one of them, and this constant violence against them isn't one of them. That's just them having mental health problems. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And maybe those mental health problems are caused by transitioning. You know, exactly. That's exactly right, and for, caused by not looking into what the situation is. What, what it like, means. What I knew very uh, who who. Uh, died who was trans last year they yeah they were just in there this was an agp transsexual who was in in there completely involved in the trans bubble wasn't getting the mental health they needed because transition wasn't helping them with their underlying mental health conditions and once they had bottom surgery there was nowhere else to go that was the end of the line in terms of things you could do to realize your transition and when then when she realized her transition and it wasn't helping her problems you know, she she fell apart really quick, quite quickly, and ended up. You know, there was a quote by. Him. There's a brilliant uh, video that I must share again at some point. Um, it's one of those videos that that most people will ignore because the guy who did it, it was actually in Australia. Uh, the guy who did it was uh, is a Christian, <clears throat> so people discount that. But he was he's also a, a, a pediatrician. You know, is that the word? Pediatrician yeah. for kids, for kids, yeah, yeah. Pedi pediatrician. And he just kind of very calmly goes through the effects of puberty blockers and what it can do, and what it can do to your brain um, and so on and so forth. And and he points out the the horrific madness of, of saying that anyone who points this out would be subject to 12 years in prison in Australia for conversion therapy you know um uh and it's a it's an excellent video and he he used the phrase and i uh sorry it's another judy garland reference but he he um he used the phrase perhaps the high levels of depression is because they discovered there's no pot of gold at the end of this rainbow you know and it's so fucking true like i i i saw um excuse me i'll, I'll find this while while we're talking um now, just for the record i'm pretty sure that's not a judy garland wizard of oz expression. sorry you're right it's that's not a leprechaun expression. yeah it's <laughs> leprechauns i got mixed up between judy garland and uh that's a you uh, stereotype not a me stereotype I, <laughs> exactly exactly um uh oh where did i see this okay hold on a sec yeah uh so this is a conversation um between a um, adult trans-identified man and a 15-year-old trans-identified girl. Okay, uh, I'll post this up later so people can see um, can see it. Oh, there's Helen. Let's see if I can get her in. Hey, Helen. Hello. 
Count to ten. One, two, three. Yay! Four, five, seven, nine, ten. Yay! Yay! Winner, winner. Um, uh, Helen, I was just talking about how um, how I uh, I found this conversation between an adult ident or an adult trans trans adult trans identified man. A friend of mine sent me this. Thank you, Arthur, for this. And a fifteen year old trans identified girl. Okay. And the man says, you either look like a really baby-faced male or a tomboy girl. Once you start tea, you will start to look more masculine. Right now, you don't pass very well, or maybe a fun male. And then, thanks for the honesty. I can't wait for HRT, the bloke. I bet I'm going to start taking estrogen soon, and I can't wait. Well, maybe like in like a year, I've got to get my financial situation figured out. <laughs> so, he's, so he's not taking estrogen. <laughs> um, and then this girl says, just need to convince my mum to let me take it. And then this guy says, I believe in you. You can also get a therapist. And after a year of going by your real pronouns, you can go on HRT without parent permission. I think you have to be older, though. Not sure. And then the girl says, yeah, I have to be 16. Same with my legal name change. One more year. And the guy ends up by saying, heck, yeah. That's a, that's a man talking to a 15-year-old girl. That's awesome. oh. You know? Oh, I, I, yeah. It's really, really uh, frightening. Um, but uh, it is frightening. Um, I, I wanted to say you asked how my Christmas was. Yes. And um, there was a period between Christmas and New Year where I think um, the the devil made work for idle hands, and um, people the, suddenly people seemed to have gone insane. There was a particular thread that a very prominent trans activist has said that women like me weren't safe. So I explicitly said, I said, you're saying that I'm not safe for women and children. Because they said, <laughs> women like you are not safe for women and children. I said, you're saying I'm not safe for women and children. And the answers, I got over 150 replies calling me a pervert, a groomer, a rapist. I actually had somebody say uh, that I was a rapist. Um, yeah. It's the most extraordinary thing. And I think it's such a problem because this person lied about women like me to over 35,000 followers. And a lot of them are vulnerable, um, barely adult sort of young, young people. And they're vulnerable and they're in a bad situation and they want to believe that all of their problems are caused by something. And that mm. something is women. And I think I, for the first time, it just occurred to me that maybe I should be slightly worried ab about my safety because some of these accusations were were really quite quite extreme, and it, it, you know if if you're a person and somebody keeps on saying this person is a is a, a danger to women and children, she wants to check people's genitals, she wants to. <laughs> oh, there were some of them were obviously projections. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, one of them was you want to stick your finger up my ass to find oh my, my God. Like, no. Uh, uh, no. No. Not, a, not on a weekday. You're typing this 100, aren't you? Somebody replied. And it was so obviously, you know, every every accusation is a confession type stuff. But it was it was really frightening in, in yeah. a way that, there's, that, there's... that people are just being lied to completely and utterly, and they are believing it. And they're being lied to by by a bloke who's angry because people aren't accepting that his expensive facial feminization uh, procedure uh, turns uh, magically turns him into a, wo a woman. You know, it's like get over your anger about that and fucking deal with your own life. Stop, stop trying to, um, trying to put trying women to and girls in danger simply because yeah. you can't accept reality. You know? Reality is exactly right. It's just railing against reality. I don't mm. mind people um, sort of arguing with me. I, I don't mind them making making sort of points or even having a bit of fun. I'm I'm okay. You know, you can have a little bit of amusing banter, but I do mind when people are blatantly lying to other people, uh, and I can only think for the express purpose of trying to silence you to to get this huge huge sort of avalanche of people calling you names. Yeah, um, I can only <clears throat> imagine that it's just purposeful to try and. Um, sort of shame women or frighten them into silence. Uh, what other reason could there be? Yeah, yeah. It's a very... Well, it's, 
yeah. your ass. That is so dangerous when people uh, just constantly repeat that you're a, an evil person. People, it's very easy for people who are uh, believe fervently in something to work themselves up into a rage and into a lather. You know, look at uh, you know anti-abortion activists who just work themselves up into this fury that babies are being murdered. You know, or I'm look sorry. at what happened with Danish cartoons where like. At first, nobody cared. You'd show Danish cartoons to devout, uh, you know, Muslims, and they'd be like, "Okay, that's you know, it's a little bit distasteful to my taste, but it's fine." But they took it to the right person who uh, put it in the right context and whipped everyone into a frenzy, and then you know, countless yeah. people were killed. That's it's dangerous when people are trying to work up hatred. Um, I want to just get something off my chest, but um, Kathleen Stock did it to me by saying that, uh, Kathleen Stock, OB, uh, did it to me by saying that um, I instigated a pylon uh, against someone. I did not instigate a pylon. I, um, I, 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 correct, I, I believe, still stand by this, that someone who's saying that um, they find doing Zooms with their students uncomfortable because they're trying to teach them queer theory and the parents might listen in. And I said, this is grooming. And I believe it is. I believe teaching queer theory is grooming, especially when you don't want the parents to hear. And I don't mean that teaching queer theory is in itself grooming. And I don't mean that teaching Foucault, what Foucault spoke about is in itself grooming. But I think that the way that queer theory is being taught now, as if it's a fucking vision of, of the future where everybody's going to be, um, uh, living in a kind of genderless paradise is 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 grooming because it's because it's 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 setting up oh, it's setting everyone up for the world that we we nearly have and that we're trying to fight against. Yeah, I remember, I remember that tweet. I remember that. Picture. <coughs> they, yeah, uh, it was it was quite an astonishing thing. But the, you know, and then I got home and uh, to find not only Kathleen saying this again, but also uh, a letter put through my letterbox. <clears throat> you know, by someone who, who, which was hand delivered. So someone who knows where I live, um, you know, we've, I, 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 a couple of days before Christmas, I was fingerprinted because I had to um, eliminate my fingerprints from the, from the ones uh, that's on the card. That. That's, to, that's, that's really, uh, that's before I gave it yeah. to the police and Kathleen, of all people should know that this is the kind of life I have when I started this fight. And I never gave her anything except support. <clears throat> I wonder, though, I mean, it must be so horrible to be, you know, accused of instigating a pylon when you're trying to convey this important thing about grooming and people are misconstruing it. I can see that must be incredibly frustrating. And I, I don't know the details, but I hope that when Kathleen said that, she maybe chose her words very poorly because she was in a situation where she was kind of in the middle of a firefight and, you know, perhaps was... Yeah, but here's the thing. You know. Here's the thing. In the end, you don't throw allies under the bus to save yourself. Yeah. Not, you know, when the mob is coming for you, you don't do that. And that's that's what I how I feel uh, she behaved. I'm, I'm not very happy with it. But, you know, I, I'm still going to sign the letter in support of her if they'll let me sign it. Um, and I still find that the stuff that's going on that we 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 touched on briefly, Helen, uh, about the academics um, signing the letter. It's so funny. It's incredible. I think that it, two, two. I don't know if you touched on this, but there are there are two parts to that letter which I find incredible. Um, the first one is that they, uh, you know, they said the uh, the violence and harassment against the trans community has been well documented, and you think, <laughs> well, it's been written down many, many, many times, but it doesn't really have a decent source, does it? Lots and lots no. of people say it, if that's what you mean by documented, like hundreds of people repeating it. But it's <laughs> really well documented in terms of evidence and a source for this evidence and statistics. So that was interesting, plus the, the fact that they said that she was against the GRA, but also the fact that they then they had to add that addendum and the addendum said, oh, yeah, sorry, we were wrong about this. But we're not taking the letter down because lots of people have signed it because everyone has signed it now. I know, I know. It's right. But we were just saying, we were saying, Helen, like, is that the first open letter that's had an addendum? I mean, is that like, is that something that, like, when, <clears throat> you know, I remember when the um, J.K. Rowling letter was going around, you know, there were, there were a few people who were uh, very rightly just very, very, um, 
uh, minutely examining the text and making sure that there wasn't anything in it that that could be misconstrued or, or do you know what I mean or whatever it yeah. was. There's no kind of um, uh, oversight on letters like these because these people have so far had such an easy ride. And you know, I think these 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 academics. You know, there was a there was a letter um, to, that that someone wrote about it. I'll quickly see if I can find it. Um, uh, uh, yeah, um, these, someone said, uh, if viewed as a first order philosophical topic, the trans issue is indeed curious in that for many, normal standards of rational debate ought to be abandoned. Those who think otherwise are literally phobic, violent, or whatever, and deserve to be hounded and discredited by all, any means possible, all in the name of higher virtue. If viewed sociologically, however, the fog clears, the real problem with Kathleen Stock and others is that if they are right, then mainstream academic feminism is not serious, morally, politically, <laughs> and intellectually. And that's what it is. These people, these yeah. people know that they're going to be found out soon. Kira, yeah. Kira Bell was one example. You know, there's there's been a few others. Alison Phipps said a hilarious thing. She said to, to all my colleagues, I don't know what to say. You know, yes. like she's she's in the same university as 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 Kathleen Stock. Alison Phipps is the one who got her students to do Lego sculptures. Yes. <laughs> to represent intersectionality. Now, why didn't she get a fucking OBE? Maybe it's because of that. You know? <laughs> maybe it's because maybe it's because she's working with Lego. Maybe um, that's why, and they're, and she's teaching adults. Maybe that's why she didn't get an OBE. These people were, are being found out. Well, maybe, but, but there, and there was more to that letter as well. It wasn't actually saying anything. It was saying, I mean, they weren't actually trying to engage with anything that Kathleen Stop says. Um, it was simply an, an attack. They were saying, um, I, I, wrote, I wrote it down. It says, you know, we believe in free speech. We, we totally believe in free speech. Yeah. And you're like, well, what are you actually trying to say? I, what they were seem to be saying is, is that we totally believe in free speech, but we don't think she should be saying this. And for no other reason that they, they think it's transphobic, but with no evidence or, you know, that it's that ridiculous thing. Or, and this leads to, leads to attacks on vulnerable people with absolutely no evidence at all. But it's just that mealy mouth way of saying we actually do believe in free speech, but yet we're still going to sign a letter to condemn her. But what are they asking for? They're not asking for anything. It's no. it's a really stupid letter that makes them look really, really, really stupid because none of them even found out the facts before signing it. I mean, yeah. how unprofessional can you actually be? It's just yeah. they all look like real idiots. But I think also, you know, you gotta you gotta think that the sunk cost fallacy is coming in here which is my favorite new phrase i mean there's some people oh, yeah. and they've sunk so much into oh, this definitely you know certain certain trolls you're familiar with and i'm familiar with helen they have sunk they will never recover from this because we have the screenshots you know like like the failed comedian. sorry i have to i have to I, I really don't want to talk about it but the failed comedian for instance i've got all the screenshots of how he talked to uh corinne corinna cone and and uh, Fiona Orlander, you know, he's like as obnoxious with trans people, if not more than he that, that he is with with women, you know. Um, so you know, he's they can he recently deleted a lot of his tweets, I think, out of uh, self preservation. But um, luckily, you know, enough uh, linger that I don't think he'll ever live it down. And there's other people as well. There's other people, and you know, they're supposed to be serious people. I don't know how anyone will take them seriously again. You know? I, I don't. I don't know. I honestly can't see how a lot of people are going to recover from this. I mean, most most of them would probably just say, "Yeah, no, we had reservations," but you know, some people would just be honest and say, mm. "You know, well, I've changed my mind because I thought it was the new, you know, um, being against thought... rights." And, mm -hmm. and so, you know, they'll change their minds. But actual academics, people who have really, really um, put their name to it, it's going to be difficult for them. I think. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. I used to think I, Twitter was going to be like that. How do you mean? Oh, I just like I used to think you know everybody. The difference between when people uh, had um, political positions that quickly became untenable in the past was that 
nothing was recorded and documented so they could you know if you were against like uh you know interracial marriage you could you could sloth that you could slough that yeah. off and pretend you never were against it as mm. as progress advanced but you couldn't do that with twitter because everybody's put their opinions out there until mm. i realized actually you totally easily can we yeah. saw when who was it frankie boyle and jamila jamil the day that the uh children aren't born in the wrong bodies announcement was made and suddenly there were like two people who conspicuously decided to delete their entire twitter history did frankie boyle did delete his i don't remember who it was actually no, it, it was, it was, it, I, it was I Jim, Jamil, Jamil did it yeah, uh, definitely, and a few others. Uh, no, I, was, I don't even know who Frankie Boyle. I don't even know if Frankie Boyle is a guy or a girl. To be honest, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> you don't need to know about him. He's, <laughs> he's been exposed as the biggest okay. hypocrite who ever lived. I mean, yeah. just the most ridiculous. But, but, but you know, these things. But this letter, I think, this um, it's you know, it's woken more people up again. Like every every time something like this happens, I think more and more people look at it and think, "Hang on, really? That mm. that, that doesn't doesn't make much sense." Um, in fact, today it, it occurred to me that um, this trans activist, one of their biggest problems is not women like me, but it's followers that they have, followers that say these things to women mm. like me, because mm. I absolutely publicize these things. I think mm. it's really important to shine a very bright light on what's being said. Um, and the, the more I say it, or the more people say it, the more people see it. So, you know, at some point, I mean, it seems to be getting more and more and more, and it's just... It's going to explode, and people are going to be like, "It's going to be carnage." <laughs> also, since since Trump Trump is gone, I think people are now like like I don't know if you saw the the Democrats did this. Thing. <laughs> I mean, he says it was just a pawn to to represent women, but I don't believe that. Where he said uh, he ended it a prayer by saying "Amen" and "A woman," and I thought, "Oh my God, they're taking the word woman out of cervical cancer literature and they're <laughs> putting it where it doesn't belong." <laughs> you know. These are the Although dumbest I, people on earth. I read, uh, I read that this was a uh, was a thing with sort of sort of Southern Baptist preachers that they. Oh they, really? They, yes, I read. I read this fairly recently. I mean, it's very hard to tell, isn't it? But who knows? This yes. is one of the things. Like I was thinking about this in relation to COVID actually today. Right, one of the big problems we have. Right, uh, never mind who the failed comedian was. If you if you name him, then uh, he he he. Go, turns into a Roman candle for even longer hours of the day. Poor guy's never offline. We don't want to name him and, and make make his life even more bizarre. Um, but but uh, but but with COVID, right? I mean, okay, I'm going to start with the Iraq War. All right, I'm going to go. I, and I may you may have heard me say this before. Okay, but for me, the big lie of the Iraq Second Iraq War was the one that because it was unpunished, people just kind of got the got the lesson that you can lie. You can lie and you can, you'll get away with it, right? And I think that even if, if someone had, you know, he, Blair had a few slaps on the wrist in, in small ways, and but n nothing really substantial. Uh, I kind of think he was a bit of a victim in a, in a weird way because he was just so fucking, he just thought he was, again, he's one of these people who thinks he's a good person and everything I do is good, therefore this is a good thing that I'm doing. I think that's the trap he fell into. But, 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 but anyway, there was no punishment. There was no wider punishment, right? And then Trump comes along, and Trump's the same. Trump's like, like lie, 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 lie. He, he, he lies, then in the next uh, uh, thing, he, he lies about lying, right? Again, no, no repercussions. Four years the fucking guy had. He shouldn't have lasted a week, you know? Four years of, of, of constant lying without any repercussions. And we've also had four years of the left saying that men are women, that, that women on, on testosterone are exactly the same as gay men, you know, uh, uh, that, me, that, women, that men uh, who put on dresses are exactly the same as, as women, right? These fucking crazy lies that have just, and then whenever you uh, try and uh, pick them up on it, they turn off replies or they block or they run away. Like this Jonathan Ithagawa guy. <laughs> He was very funny. Yeah. He was like, uh, I'm going to leave Twitter for a few days because yeah. uh, my instructions to the mob weren't quite understood and they're coming for me. So <laughs> he, but, he had to fuck up. But if there's one thing that Trump has absolutely taught us now as a society is that we understand the idea of narcissistic projection. We have seen yeah. it and we have seen 
every accusation is a confession. We have seen it. And I think mm. this is this does wake people up. And I think some of the things that people people say to me, you know, I look at them and I think, yeah. you know, somebody today said, I honestly, they actually use the word honestly. I honestly believe that part of Helen's problem here with changing rooms is that she's worried that she wants to pick up the teenage girls in there, but actually she's worried that the trans women will get to them first. They would prefer wow. the trans women. And I'm like, you've, wow. you've just told them clearly that your idea of a changing room is where somewhere goes to pick up women and girls. <laughs> I mean, what the, f I mean, what the actual, yeah. it was such a ridiculous thing to say. I mean, like I, I said, you know, this is such a ridiculous answer. I mean, this works fine for me, but it mm. makes your side look dreadful. Mm. The person who said that to you, was that a trans person? That sounds like a male to female who's like, you're just jealous because I'm going to get all the pussy. Yes. I, you know? I, 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 this was, this was, yes, of course, this was, this was. A, oh, was it? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, of course. This is, this is TRAs all over. Their, their view of women, the way they look, they, they think of women. Yes. It's just extraordinary. Like, it you know, one, one of the things I learned very, very quickly, very quickly in my in my dating life was that women did not think about sex in the same way as men at all. It's a completely different. No, come on, Helen. It well, is. I, I, I <laughs> it is. Yeah. Like, you know, like, I, I mean, I like I like sex. I like having sex. But honestly, I am not. When I talk about penises, it's mainly in the context of Keep them out of my way. I do not want to see a penis from somebody yeah. that I have not consented right. to see. And I they know to... very well, they know very well, because there's been a million threads about it, that women have been subjected to this since they're eight years old and younger. Yeah. You know? And the idea, and they're still trying to force them on women in changing rooms because they think that if the, <laughs> that if the situation was reversed, they'd yeah. love it. They think, yeah. oh, if women were just walking around naked and showing themselves off to me all the time, I'd love, you know, I'd love it. It's like, no, yeah, you, you're different. You're <laughs> different to women, you know. Yeah. You have, you know, I, it's. I, I mean, sadly, we, we absolutely know this. There's no question. Yeah. So fundamental, we yeah. Know this because we do know this. I, I did that awful thread. I think it was necessary, but it was, it's, it was harrowing. Um, a few months ago, where I asked women to put down the age where they were first exposed um, un, you know, where they, where they did un, unconsensually to yeah. somebody's genitalia and what, how old were they and what sex was that person? Yeah. And it was nine male, 12 male, 11 male, four male. And then some women, you know, just awful stories of how they'd actually been raped. Most of it was flashes in the park. And there were maybe a handful, five or six women and the, the thread has got about 650 replies and about five of them where people are saying they're women. So we absolutely it, it, know there's a difference. We know there's a difference. This pretense that there's no fucking difference is one of the is one of the most morally unconscionable lie that trans activism is trying to push. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I got into an argument in person with, with uh, an ex friend of mine over that when I was saying, you know, men are far more likely to commit these acts than women are. So when you're just trying to get rid of, um, you know, single sex spaces for women, this is going to cause problems. And their retort was like, oh, yeah, well, sometimes women do it, too. Or, you know, hmm. what's the difference between a lesbian oh, in a oh, women's this. space and a straight man in a women's space kind of thing? And it's like those arguments just infuriate me, you know. I, I've actually just seen because <clears throat> my PC was still logging on on Twitter here now, right now. I've just seen that prominent trans activist that I was just talking about has replied because somebody asked me a question which I think they thought was a gotcha about should women be have the right to undress in rooms where teenage girls are addressing. And I'm like, it's a, it's a tautology. Should women and girls be allowed to undress in a space with women and girls? I, I mean, that's ridiculous. And what are you and thinking when you're saying, oh, a lesbian just should... Reply. I've said, yes, women and girls. And this trans activist has actually said, how are we supposed to know you're not a pervert? Yeah. Uh, what kind of answer is that? There's possibly a greater chance that a random cis woman is a pedo <laughs> than there is she's trans. Why a is greater that? chance. That's a guy. <laughs> That's a but guy. Just, how are you supposed to know? I've never, ever said anything like that to anyone. All I do is ask a question because actually I don't think the bar for women and girls is being confronted with a pedophile or being raped. I think the bar for women and girls is... I actually don't want to undress in front of somebody with yeah. a penis. Yeah. For no exactly. other reason than I don't want to, that I say no. I don't and Helen, you are, 
You are 100% right not to want that. You are 100% right. And anyone who says you're wrong is lying for very, very I suspicious don't reasons. I don't There's no such thing as being wrong not to want that because you get to not want whatever the hell you goddamn not want. You know? I, I don't care if he's the nicest man. I don't care if he's a lawyer or a doctor or if he's my great friend who lives down the road. I don't want to undress in front of him and I don't want my girls to undress in front of him. And I have never said because trans women are paedophiles or rapists because I don't care. That's not the fucking bar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. I'm sorry. Again, I I, I can only apologize for the fact you have to fucking say this obvious stuff. <laughs> Stupid people who've made donkeys of themselves by 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 holding this line and investing more and more so costs into, into their, their opinion. I'm really so easy. sorry, Helen. I mean it really, so it really much easier to say, yes, you're right, actually, you know, we can see that in lots of situations trans women should be treated like women in employment. Maybe you can call them by the names they want. Don't laugh at them if they dress like women. But yes, I can see the problem with changing rooms and you know, you're, you're right. Let's find a compromise. Wouldn't it just be nice and easy if you said that? Because that's what people believe, which is why people always say, no, you should have stalls. We should have stalls. Because what they're doing there is the implication is that they understand the problem with communal changing rooms. And but they won't say it. So they move to, oh, my God, we need stalls. We need stalls. Yeah. Why aren't you advocating for stalls? Instead of saying, honestly, yeah, you're right. I can see an issue with this. Yeah. That's fair enough. Let's let's work it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Yeah. But we can do something else. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a good point that let's, you're saying, you're talking about the penis issue, so to speak, so much, because so many other women can't. So it's not that yeah. you're obsessed with penises, it's that you're, you're, you're taking this on for all the people who can't talk about it, you know? I think it, you, 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 know you felt like you were distrusting yourself there for a second, Artie. Maybe Helen is obsessed with penises. Even if I was obsessed with penises, even if I was a woman that's obsessed with penises, yeah. It's quite interesting, isn't it, that so many men are obsessed with penises. People put pictures of their, you know, you, you look at lots of um, people's feeds and there's lots of pictures on there that I think, whoa, I would not have posted that. And I certainly didn't want to see it. Um, <laughs> but it's it, But if I if I talk about it, they're like, oh, my God, let's try and sexually humiliate. Or oh, yeah, I, I, exactly. In yeah. fact, Genevieve. Oh, my God, look at that. She's talking about penises, a woman. That's, that's such shame her. You know, Actually, even if I was talking about it properly, like I want to see penises everywhere, <laughs> like it, it would, it would still be wrong. Yeah, yeah. Um, Genevieve I, uh, Gluck is 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 watching, and Genevieve is uh, is the one who uh, did a brilliant piece on um, hypno porn and 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 the the uh, influence of porn in general on this debate, um, and. Uh, Genevieve, you can remind me uh, if I'm wrong, but didn't you say that, you know, uh, trans porn is like the highest, the highest growing kind of form of porn there is, or it's the highest, it's the most searched or something like that. You can get back to us on on that. Um, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, there's just this fucking confusion, I think, that's growing up among men who've just watched too much porn porn and they're oh, yeah. just kind of spiraling somewhere that they don't really understand the only people who are if you can't answer the question that the standaland question with a simple yes or no then then you've taken a wrong turn somewhere you know you have taken a wrong turn you know and 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 they can't none of them can answer it with a yes or no it's extraordinary yeah, there'll be these kids these days i was just I, i've been spending a lot of time over the holidays thinking about the chalinor Saga. Fifth highest. Fifth highest in Poland. Fifth highest. Oh, sorry, yeah. where is it? Well, that's there good. We go. Yeah. 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 Like, yes. we forget that, remember, Amy, Amy, and David Chalinor, and then Amy's two husbands now, um, his mommy, uh, Katrina, and his daddy, Nathaniel, um, they, 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 they run Reddit now. They own Reddit. They, they, they just completely yes. dominate Reddit. They're the moderators of all of Reddit. And then they have their block list on Twitter. And then they're like, they dominate all these really creepy fetish forums for sissy hypno porn and yep. for furryism and baby diaper stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> so they're dominating this. These are people who are, are trying to say that being gender nonconforming equals being trans equals being 
LGBT equals breaking down all the barriers and the safeguards. They are really pushing to put all this into one giant package so yeah. that if you like one of these things, you like all these other things. Yes, um, and, and it also makes it harder. <laughs> it makes it harder to um, uh, spot it when it's when it's when it's breaking uh, safeguarding principles. It makes it harder to fight against it. Absolutely, the Chalinar example is so perfect <laughs> because you had a young Amy who was just skyrocketing through the uh, political arena. At the same time, he was attached to his father who was going through the literal uh, criminal process of being charged with horrific unspeakable crimes against yeah. a little girl and then the son was saying oh yeah this is all about trans rights but behind him was his father who was saying this is about gaining access to children you know yeah, so exactly. it's like this perfect story i've been trying to turn it into almost like a a short story of sorts like a true crime kind of thing because if people talk about you know you've posted on uh, your website your Substack, fantastic investigative reporting about it. It really gets to the juice of the details. But oh, yeah, that was from Nutmeg. Unbelievable. Uh, but somebody's got to put the whole it. story together, the political rise and the sort of analysis of what it means and all the details of what that deep dive investigation into their social media does. So I've been kind of like as a mental health oh, exercise. Oh, Ernie, like, I've, got, but, I've got a document <clears throat> for you that, that goes into even deeper detail and is even more disturbing. And the thing that I find frightening that um, I really, I've been trying to do a piece on this, but it's, and I've been trying to interest journalists in it, but I can't seem to get people to understand how, how big this is. Basically, uh, Amy Challoner um, mm -hmm. has been playing a game called Among Us, which is yeah. if anyone has kids, they will know that Among Us is a hugely popular game. Challoner has been playing Among Us with children. And there's one video and you can hear what appears to be Nathaniel Knight's voice at the start of the video. So Nathaniel Knight and Amy Challoner are playing Among Us, which, you know, bizarrely enough is about is a hidden roles game where one person is uh, not what they- Each other to keep secrets, essentially. Pretend to be, yeah. yeah. Um, and they've been doing it for charity, for um, uh, the Betsy DeVos Hospital in, <laughs> in Michigan, I think. Yeah, yeah. And I can't get pay a newspaper interest. And I keep saying to these newspapers, you do know that Amy Challoner was at the heart of Stonewall when Stonewall was trying to introduce um, uh, these uh, policies that we can safeguard. Is is one of the reasons, for instance, that Helen Watts uh, lost her girl guiding troop because girl guiding was taking advice from Stonewall. You know, there's a there's a picture of Amy Challoner doing her Jupiter's delight grin with a girl guiding badge you know, around the time that uh, Helen Watts was chucked out, you know, these are t is extremely dangerous people. And they are, they, they, they were in uh, the absolute epicenter of decision-making on these issues in the UK. And I can't right. get a fucking journalist to cover it. You know, it's, unbelievable. No, no it's, so, it's so shocking how obvious it really was a conscious concerted effort. Amy Chaloner was, is absolutely just in a complete circle of hardcore extreme fetishists who have extreme interest in adolescents and children at the same time as extreme sexual um, fetishes. That, and they're deliberately trying to gain power and influence. They're trying to gain yeah. power and influence online. Oh, yeah. They're trying to literally enter into electoral politics. Like, and they're trying to gain in access to all of these gay rights activist organizations. This is a calculated effort for what, I don't want to say what it looks like, <laughs> mm, mm. Edible pay, Ingray, you know, trying Ray. to get into but, this, yeah. But, but you know, um, Graham, that you know, so many people. I read, I read a biography about um, Jimmy Savile. So many people knew. So really? many people knew, but right. nobody. See, when I, when I heard the rumors. Nobody would say it out loud. Nobody would say it out loud. Coventry Pride, same thing. Coventry Pride knew. Yeah. And Amy Chaloner's uh, best friend, um, bosom buddy, who was her father, Baloo, was being charged with kidnapping, torture, and rape. And just all they did was say, you know, maybe don't bring your dad to the events. And Amy still brought him anyways, and they didn't they didn't say anything. And then when yeah. Amy got literally promoted up to the national Stonewall UK, they still nobody said a bloody word. The Green Party knew. The Green Party yeah. bloody knew. 
Yeah, and the Greens, and, and, and let's, uh, just a quick recap of, this is Amy Challoner's um, uh, political uh, trajectory. Started with the Green Party, was chucked out when when the father's uh, thing came to light. The Lib Dems, even knowing this, oh, took no. her on, took him on. Yeah. Him, him, her. Um, him. Well, I don't know. I, uh, took Amy Challoner on. Then Amy Challoner, it got too hot for Amy Challoner in the UK. Uh, <laughs> so they, they she, he went over to America, signed up with Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren, like this person okay. kind of failing up. And then last I saw, there's like a Joe Biden group on um, on Reddit, and uh, uh, Nathaniel, I think, is the moderator of that as well. And this, and remember, around this, around the same time, Reddit got rid of nearly all gender critical groups. Yes, and, and kept all the underage porn and all that sort of stuff. You know. Oh my God, uh, it, Graham, can you send me all that stuff about? Yes, uh, I will, because I really want to know how to how to get it into a shape that I can share the most shocking stuff and get people to listen. Because it, as you say, it is like Savile. The thing that it, I, I want to I give myself uh, an alibi for the Savile thing. I was in TV when Savile was still, uh, uh, I guess, operating. I don't think he would have been as as, as active. Um, I'm not sure how, when he gave up his, uh, his pursuits. But um, I remember hearing that as a rumor and thinking, oh, okay, that's just because he did a children's TV show. And that's because people think, oh, wouldn't it be gross and horrible if he was actually a pedophile? So I, I discounted it for that reason, you know? Um, and of course, that was actually the plan. It was kind of like, do children's, do work with children, do, do, do work up for charities, and people will take the, uh, take the rumors as a kind of a serious kind of thing. And now Challoner is doing fucking charity work with children for Betsy DeVos, the Betsy yeah, DeVos that, hospital. You know, that's what, you know, hiding in plain sight is such an obvious uh, yes. thing, isn't it? It really is. And, and my God, has there ever been an easier time to hide in plain sight? I always say, I always say that, like, you know, um, this is, this is what, what this is, is if you imagine Jimmy Savile was not on the internet, was not famous, a famous DJ when there was no mass communication in the way that we know it now. Um, uh, or at least the mass communication was much more gate, it was, it, there was a lot of gatekeepers and yeah, so on and so forth. Yes, and now it's like a bunch of Jimmy Savills who all want the same thing that Jimmy Savile always wanted, now know that they can do things like send you a thousand messages, Helen, saying that you're a pervert because they 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 know that that will get traction should simply by the amount of people saying it yeah. more than your very simple point which is that women deserve uh privacy and dignity you know it's 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 a really dangerous time for women it, it you know is. it is and it is difficult to know how to come come to it i'll just carry on <laughs> yeah i know all you can do is keep fighting you know i mean yeah. you can what else can you do you know Oh, uh, that's the. I guess that's about fifty-seven minutes. This year. We. I feel like we. 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 we well, I left. There's I left more to cover. Uh, yes. Much more. Much more happened. Something else happened that was great or bad. I can't remember. <laughs> 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 there was good news and there was bad news. It was I, the I, best of news. I write notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, very briefly before we before we move, let's talk a little bit about Kira Bell. Um, uh, there's two there's two crowd funders at the moment that people should uh, uh, put money into. Uh, one is the Kira Bell crowd funder because because the Tavistock bizarrely are going to try and challenge uh, on what basis who knows, um, but it's a very stressful thing and money is always useful in these situations. Uh, so please donate money to Kira Bell's crowd funder and also there's a crowd funder. Um, I think it's uh, I think it's connected to the Safe Schools Alliance. Uh, where a young girl is taking the College of Policing to court um, for uh, forcing her to believe in gender identity or something like that. There's only a few days left on that one, so uh, that might be one to concentrate on in the in the very short term. I'll just um, call the right wing U.S. evangelists. <laughs> yes, where's our check? Where's our check? Um, I will. Uh, Artie, would you mind putting those links in the boilerplate with the with your usual stuff when you're when you're doing the YouTube? Brilliant. We'll we'll yeah. get that in. And I never did. You know, they never did. I never did the links to the answers in our Suzanne Moore thing. 
I just uh, so I, I hate admin, uh, but I'll, I'll try and do it. I'll try and do it, and I'll add it. Just uh, email it to me, and I can do it. It's no problem. You sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it's just I, those know, I, I fell off the radar for like all the holidays, but I'm back on the radar. So there are there are uh, uh, receipts for all those questions we asked, but I can't remember what questions we asked at the moment. Um, <laughs> Luckily, so, it's all recorded. Yes. Um, oh, and I should say, yes, it is. <laughs> Luckily, I could actually watch it if I can steal <laughs> myself for that. Um, uh, another thing is we will have Alicia from The Countess Didn't Fight for This next week. Uh, we, I, I was hoping to have her on today, but but uh, I think she's able to do it next week. So we'll be asking about Ireland and what's happening over there at the moment and how Colm O'Gorman still has a job for Amnesty International <laughs> after saying that certain women should not have political representation. The most extraordinary thing uh, for the head of Amnesty to say, and he's still, still got his job. Amazing. Um, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, I rambled a bit there. Is there anything else anyone wants to say? No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm going to go fight these people now again. Artie, <laughs> I hope you, I hope you get back. I've got I've got half an hour before dinner. I'm going back okay. in. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, Artie, I hope you're back on at some point. I'm sorry that you're having all this. Um, it is uh, always a treat to see your your uh, the words Artie Morty pop up on Twitter. Um, uh, so and everybody's been asking for you. Everybody's they been have, wondering about you. They really have people. In fact, I get I get a bit pissed off because everyone thinks you're so cute, and I'm like, <laughs> hello. Oh, that's <laughs> really sweet. That's oh. sweet. Oh, I'll let you. Really I'll nice. let you too. I'll let the eye candy fight it out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> battle for domination. Uh, all right. Well, th happy New Year again to everyone, and we will keep doing these. And see you next week. Uh, yeah. Bye bye. bye.